the end, you'll decide the ultimate winner. And some things you just shouldn't see. America's Got Talent, a renowned competition program dedicated to discovering the nation's top entertainers, has taken an unexpected turn with its upcoming spinoff, AGT Extreme. This spinoff exclusively focuses on Daredevil Acts, a premise that has ignited significant online buzz. The concept of a competition centered on extreme stunts has raised concerns as participants may push the boundaries further and further in pursuit of victory, leading to increasingly perilous performances. Critics have voiced their apprehensions about the show's potential danger, and even before the first episode aired, their concerns seemed validated. On October 15, 2021, TMZ reported a harrowing incident that occurred on the set. The accident involved Jonathan Goodwin, a 41-year-old daredevil stuntman who had previously attempted life-threatening challenges on AGT without incident. However, this time was different. Goodwin was suspended 70 feet in the air in a straitjacket, hanging by his feet from a wire between two swinging cars. His objective was to free himself from the restraints, fall onto an air mattress, and avoid being crushed by the cars. Tragically, something went terribly wrong. The cars collided, trapping Goodwin between them and causing a massive explosion. Goodwin fell to the ground, hitting his head. While the extent of his injuries remained unclear, they were reported as severe, necessitating his airlift to a nearby trauma unit. What makes this incident even more shocking is that it occurred during rehearsal, without a live studio audience, and possibly without the cameras rolling. However, a recording of the event surfaced shortly after the initial report, spreading rapidly across social media platforms. The video captured the horrifying moment of impact and the subsequent explosion. While the video is distressing, it's nothing short of a miracle that Goodwin survived. He sustained injuries such as two broken legs and burns throughout his body. He took to his Instagram page to reassure his fans that he's on the road to recovery, though it will undoubtedly be a challenging journey. Following the release of this shocking video and the incident's widespread coverage, production of AGT Extreme was temporarily halted. The show's future remains uncertain, and it's unclear how the producers will proceed. If they choose to continue, it's likely that safety measures and precautions will be under intense scrutiny to prevent similar accidents in the future. Our next story takes us back to a rather obscure Reddit post from September 2020. This tale unfolded on the Illegal Advice subreddit, where the original poster, OP, sought guidance concerning a challenging situation involving their neighbor. The OP painted the following picture. They resided in a duplex with their husband and their few months old son. Half of the duplex was owned by the OP's father-in-law, who was renting it to them, while the other half was owned by an older woman and her adult daughter. The father-in-law had known the woman for over 15 years and had cautioned the OP about the daughter's mental health issues, including severe delusions that had caused problems with previous tenants. Things seemed relatively peaceful until about two weeks prior to the Reddit post, when the neighbor began banging on the walls and throwing objects whenever their son cried. This escalated into the neighbor screaming at them although the OP often couldn't discern what she was saying over the commotion of a wailing baby and barking dogs. The situation was chaotic and exacerbated the OP's postpartum anxiety. Desperate, the OP had contacted the non-emergency police line twice when they could no longer cope. The first time, the police spoke to the neighbor and the disturbances temporarily lessened, occurring once every two days. However, the situation worsened leading the police to suggest a civil anti-harassment order, although they expressed skepticism about its effectiveness. The OP was at a loss, wondering if their only option was to move, which they couldn't afford. 
The initial Reddit post received minimal attention, with some sympathizing with the neighbor's plight of sharing a wall with a crying baby. Others, however, found the neighbor's actions concerning as her behavior seemed to be escalating. Regardless of the viewpoint, most agreed that the OP had limited options beyond moving out, and the post faded into obscurity. But the story took an unexpected turn nearly seven months later, when the OP posted an update thrusting the once obscure narrative into the spotlight. The update described a shocking sequence of events. The neighbor's banging had escalated into destructive behavior, with her creating a hole through the shared wall. The neighbor had purchased a megaphone to amplify her threats and obscenities. The police were called multiple times, but claimed they couldn't intervene. The OP and their family had to move in with their grandmother for safety. The most shocking revelation was that the elderly mother in the other half of the duplex had been unseen for several months. Requested wellness checks had been dismissed. Eventually, in late January, the police entered the neighbor's property to find the elderly mother deceased since at least June. Her daughter had left the body rotting in a locked bedroom dressed in her Sunday best. The update concluded with the daughter being taken to an inpatient psychiatric facility. This bizarre and disturbing story, initially unnoticed on Reddit, had come to a bizarre and disturbing conclusion, gaining attention as readers uncovered similar real-life news articles corroborating the narrative. The Reddit post, once an obscure thread, had taken a dark twist that captivated online audiences. When, when someone dies, it means they're, they're not alive anymore. Reddit is a platform that houses a diverse array of content, and within its depths, we stumble upon a thread that requires no introduction to grasp its somber nature. This particular post was created on the Ask Reddit subreddit. The user posed a profoundly poignant question. Redditors who know how much time they have left, how does your day look like? The post quickly gained viral status, attracting hundreds of responses. Unsurprisingly, the most poignant accounts came from individuals facing terminal illnesses. One user's account painted a heart-wrenching picture. I have ALS, a rapidly progressing condition. Every day, I deteriorate further. Today, I struggled to put on a shirt, lacking the strength and energy to eat. I'm losing weight and face constant chastising. Thankfully, there's no pain but I can't perform the basic tasks we take for granted. I now have T-Rex arms. And in the coming weeks, I doubt I'll walk or stand. I'm working hard to secure a prescription for death with dignity. This isn't how I want to live. I'll be fortunate to make it to Christmas, more likely early November at this rate. I don't want to endure this any longer. Another individual shared their experience. My days are a mixed bag. Some days I can't muster the will to get out of bed, and when I do, leaving the house feels insurmountable. I have tumors on my spine, so when things worsen, my legs will likely be the first to go. This is my time, and it took a lot of suffering before I could release the stress of living. Sometimes the best thing is to crack open a beer, watch some TV, and not feel guilty about it. It's easy to believe that every day must be a monumental achievement, but if I'm happy, I'm content. Many shared a common feeling of guilt for the burden they believed they placed on their families and the sorrow their loved ones would endure when they were gone. It was a deeply affecting and emotional exchange. However, what makes this thread even more profoundly heartbreaking is the realization that it is over five years old, and the voices that once filled it with hope, despair, and wisdom have fallen silent. There are no updates, no recent posts. The individuals responsible for the most compelling stories in this thread have left us, succumbing to the fate they knew was lurking. This transforms the thread from a portrayal of what their last days would look like into a haunting testament. To what their last days did look like. It is, in my view, 
one of the most emotionally poignant threads I have encountered. Wait till you see New York from our point of view. Spend a sunset on top of the world. Gazing upon New York from our vantage point, we watched the sun dip below the horizon, casting a warm glow over the world. It's a rarity to find many who can predict their future or the path that destiny will carve for them. More often than not, the future unfolds in ways we could never have fathomed. This tale leads us to a corner of the Internet known as airliners.net, where 21 years ago, a group of users engaged in a discussion that revolved around an improbable scenario. The subject line of the thread read, If a 707 hit the World Trade Center. The conversation was initiated by a user named MD90, who pointed out that the World Trade Center towers were originally designed to withstand the impact of the largest airliner of their era, the Boeing 707 Intercontinental. Drawing a parallel, they mentioned the Empire State Building surviving a B-25 medium bomber crash during a foggy day, resulting in 14 casualties. MD-90 then posed the question, could the World Trade Center survive a 767 impact? In response, a user cautioned against attempting such a feat, alluding to the tragedy of a previous terror attempt. From there, others joined the discussion. One user painted a grim picture, emphasizing the devastation a fully loaded airliner could cause. The debate continued with one individual outlining the factors that would make such an impact even more catastrophic than the B-25 bomber incident. They stressed the unlikelihood of passengers or crew surviving such a dire scenario, considering the higher population density per floor compared to the Empire State Building. Another user contended that the buildings themselves would likely withstand the impact given their proximity to other structures. However, if the aircraft could somehow penetrate and hit the base, it might lead to a complete collapse. A hit 500 or 600 feet up, they argued, probably wouldn't bring down the entire structure. Intriguingly, an employee who had worked at the World Trade Center at the time chimed in, sharing the unsettling experience of watching planes approach LaGuardia Airport from the observation deck. They admitted to the nagging fear that a pilot might crash a plane into the building. The conversation took a chilling turn, as someone mentioned the Tenerife Airport disaster of 1977, which resulted in 582 deaths. They speculated that a similar event at the World Trade Center could lead to 1,500 casualties, considering the occupants of the plane, the building, and those on the ground. In the worst-case scenario of a building collapse, the death toll could soar to five or 6,000. The thread concluded with a mention of aircraft lights on buildings, a haunting reminder of the unpredictability of life. Little did they know that less than a year later, the unimaginable would become reality. Two Boeing 767 planes crashed into the World Trade Center, altering the course of history. These were the very planes referenced in the thread. The same ones that MD-90 had questioned whether the World Trade Center could survive. As it turned out, it couldn't. The Internet continually astounds me with its unsettling content. And that's the history of the camera. Cheese. Recently, Yay! I found myself captivated by another form of media. Photographs, specifically final photographs. Those last pictures captured before a person's life takes an irrevocable turn. The Internet is replete with countless examples of these final photographs, with an endless supply awaiting in the future. It's a sobering thought that, at some point, everyone will have their last picture taken, including you and me, whether we are aware of it at the time or not. Many of these final photographs are heart-wrenching, while others are deeply disturbing. Let's explore a few examples. The Houston Flood Tragedy on April 18, 2021, a torrential rainstorm unleashed chaos in Houston, Texas, and its environs. 
The rain poured relentlessly, exceeding 24 inches within a single day, inundating streets and waterways. Among those caught in this deluge was 21-year-old Darren Mitchell. His car became immobile as the floodwaters engulfed the highway. Stranded and realizing rescue was far from imminent, Darren called his family to express his love and assure them he was safe. He managed to exit his vehicle and believed he would be all right. Tragically, minutes later, he took a final photograph just before his truck was swept away, leading to his demise. He posted to social media saying, And all I wanted to do was go home. Moments later, worried onlookers would witness Darren's truck begin to roll before flipping over completely and disappearing into the raging water. Darren's body would be recovered days later, leaving him as one of the five victims to fall to this deadly flood. Yet another haunting final photograph emerges from the story of an ex-couple who embarked on a hiking trip through the Alabama countryside. 18-year-old Jolie Callan and her former boyfriend, Lauren Bunner, had been separated for some time. However, they made the joint decision to go on one last hike, hoping to find closure for their relationship and perhaps lay the foundation for a new and civil friendship. At this point, Jolie had moved forward with someone new and was preparing to start college. But she wanted to mend any lingering animosity with Lauren as she embarked on this fresh chapter in her life. Together, they journeyed into the mountains of Chia State Park, where Lauren documented their entire day on his Instagram page. He posted pictures of Jolie strolling with her dog and basking in the breathtaking natural surroundings. One particular snapshot stands out as a testament to the immense beauty of the woods enveloping them. Lauren captured this moment to cherish it, perhaps sensing that it would be his last shared memory with Jolie. However, just moments after immortalizing this scene, Lauren made a chilling and abrupt shift. He put his phone aside and retrieved a concealed handgun from his pocket. In a shocking turn of events, he fired a single shot into the back of Jolie's head and then, without hesitation, turned her around and fired another fatal shot. He proceeded to drag her lifeless body to the edge of the cliff, the same precipice they had been admiring moments earlier, before callously pushing her off. This grim act of violence stemmed from a jealous rage as Lauren struggled to come to terms with Jolie moving on with her life. In this moment, Jolie likely had no inkling of the grim fate awaiting her or the sinister intentions harbored by Lauren that fateful afternoon. However, among all the recent final photographs I've come across, one stands out as particularly unsettling, as it leaves much to the imagination. On June 6, 2020, a group of friends gathered at France County Park to celebrate the 46th birthday of Biba Henry. As night descended and the party began to wind down, Biba and her sister, Nicole Smallman, decided to stay on at the park, extending their celebration into the early morning hours. The two sisters danced, played music, and twirled fairy lights, savoring the day as if it were their last. In an effort to capture the essence of the festivities, they set up one of their phones and began taking photographs. Their phone was connected to a clicker, allowing them to snap over 100 pictures, documenting their night in the dark, wooded area. While many of the photos were grainy and challenging to decipher, they seemed to depict the two sisters having a great time. However, the tone abruptly shifted with their final photograph. This image is incredibly blurry and perplexing, making it difficult to discern any specific details. What is truly disturbing is the context surrounding this photograph. Comparing it to the one taken just before, it appears as though both sisters were initially posing for a photo before abruptly turning to their left in unison. It's almost as if something off-camera had caught their attention and startled them. Nicole Smallman can be seen looking to her left, and Biba Henry's body is turned in the same direction. Yet, apart from this, not much else can be discerned. This puzzling final photograph becomes all the more bizarre when you realize that it would indeed be their last. Hours later, the two sisters were discovered with over 30 stab wounds, their bodies concealed under nearby brush. They had fallen victim to a brutal murder. After a protracted investigation, it was determined that the two had been attacked that fateful morning 
by 19-year-old Daniel Hassan. His motive was incredibly bizarre. He believed he had made a pact with the devil. This entity had promised him that if he sacrificed six people every six months, he would one day win the Powerball jackpot. Daniel was convinced that the only obstacle standing between him and millions of dollars was the sacrifice of six individuals. On Biba Henry's birthday afternoon, Daniel had observed their group celebrating in the park. When the crowd dwindled to just two people, he saw it as the perfect opportunity to carry out his sinister plan. This photograph captures the moment the two sisters seemingly noticed something to their left, a moment when they first glimpsed their killer. Daniel had just emerged from the woods, barely out of frame, before launching his attack. In the year and a half since this photograph was taken, Daniel has been convicted of both murders and is sentenced to serve a minimum of 35 years in prison. It is likely that he will remain incarcerated for life. Although this story is undeniably tragic, there is some solace in knowing that Daniel will no longer be able to carry out the rest of his horrific plan. The Internet continually astounds me with its unsettling content revealing new disturbing stories each day. If you'd like to see more of this series, please do let me know, as there is an abundance of material to explore. If you found this video interesting, may I ask if you could like this video? And if you want more, smash the like button and subscribe to our channel. We love you for it. It tells us you dig our stuff and we'll make more. Catch you in the next one.